5312. Residential and commercial. Their work is guaranteed along with your satisfaction. Check their website, silverbackrestoration.com. All right, 10 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Remember when the kids were little, Rob and you? Yes. You, you, they would get sick and you would think, oh, God, what, what do I have? What do I have? <laughs> you know, do I have any cough medicine? Do I have any this, that? I don't do any of that. Don't, don't do, just make sure the doctor gives you the go ahead first, right? Exactly. Oh, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but we do. We think sometimes, you know, you got, oh. you got a little 70 pound person in your life. Is, is that a good weight for a child? I don't, I don't remember how many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hard of this, but I mean, you—you're a full-grown person. You can't give a child, obviously, the same medicines, and uh, so we have somebody on the phone to help us with this. Dr. Brianne Taylor is uh, on the phone. Dr. Taylor is a clinical pharmacy specialist with the Cincinnati Children's Medical Center, and she's talking to us specifically about uh, giving medicines safely to children and um, what the rules should be that we should be following. Dr. Taylor, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Are you in Cincinnati right now? Uh, no, I'm actually in Washington, D.C. right now. Oh, okay. I think Cincinnati's going to get snow. Did you see this? I hope not. I saw that, but I'm, I'm hoping it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know. I thought winter was over. Well, we're in Florida, so winter is over. We're done. Winter's always over for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being on the air with us. Do you have any little children of your own? I do not. Yet. No, oh, not yet. So yours not are yet. yours are, are to be in the future. Yeah, Robin. Yeah. Robin's children and mine are both. Let's see. Hers are near forty. My son is thirty. Going to be thirty-one. So, yep. yeah. So they were little children quite a while ago. But I can remember those days real clearly when you know they'd get sick. He just, oh my gosh, Dad, I have a headache. Oh my gosh, can I give him an aspirin? I don't know. I don't know what to do. That right. you know. So what? How do we know? I mean, what, aside from going to the doctor. Sure. So the biggest thing to remember, like you said, is children are not little adults. So you can't just go to your medicine cabinet and pick something that you would normally take and give it to your child or give them half the dose. Um, you have to use medications that are formulated specifically for children. Yeah. And, and, and if it's labeled that way, like uh, over-the-counter stuff, mm -hmm. if, if it says like cough medicine for children, is that uh, are we safe if it's labeled that way? Uh, even if it's labeled that way, that's not always the case. So um, the American Academy of Pediatrics um, actually says not to give any children who are less than two years of age cough and cold medicine. Um, and so, you you know, you have to avoid it in that population. And then it just depends um, what else is going on with your child. So does your child take other medications? Do they have any other illnesses that you treat on a daily basis? Because in those cases, you always want to check with your pharmacist or your doctor before you give them anything, even over-the-counter medicines. And uh, sometimes we're told not to, once uh, a, a, a child seems to be ill and is running a fever, we shouldn't give them any milk or milk products. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't, um, that, that's not usually a recommendation um, that we make, and I guess it would, you know, depend on exactly what's going on with the child. Um, but the safest thing to do is to just always check with your physician or your pharmacist um, whenever you do have those types of questions. So, so what, I mean, does it, would it vary, like, let's say you have three children, and they're yeah. all, they're all close in age, and, and the first child got something going on, and you went to the doctor and the pharmacist, and everybody agrees this is what you should give that child. Do you just apply that same information to child number two when they get the same cold or whatever, or do you, does each child need to be looked at individually? Each child needs to be looked at individually. So in children, we typically dose medications based on how much they weigh. So uh. sometimes simply five or 10 pounds can really make a difference um, in what dose the child needs. So the best thing to do is to, like I said, always check with the doctor or the pharmacist. Um, if you don't have time to go to the doctor, if you know it's something that you just want to take care of, use your pharmacist as a resource. They can oftentimes provide you with dosing recommendations, tell you how much to give and how often to give the medication. And uh, sometimes uh, those dosing recommendations when you get the uh, uh, prescriptions, they come with a cup with the amount that should be on the cup, but sometimes parents will use uh, measuring spins instead exactly. of that. So Right, and so you always want to use the measuring um, cups or syringes that are meant for medication. So like you said, the ones provided um, with the medicine. If you just simply use kitchen utensils, so you get a spoon out of your drawer, um, those don't accurately measure medication. So um, whenever you do that, you oftentimes give your child too little of medicine or too much of the medication that you're trying to give them. Do you, in your practice at the medical center, do you see a lot of cases where the, the child is there because the medicine was wrong? 
So in my particular practice, um, I take care of um, heart failure and heart transplant patients. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, so the the kids that I take care of are on lots of different medications. Sometimes Holy ten to fifteen medicines um, that they take multiple times a day. So the biggest piece of advice that I give them is um, they keep a list of all of their medicines, and that list is shared with anybody who takes care of their child. So a grandparent, a babysitter, um, somebody at school. Any time that they're adding any medicine, whether it's over the counter or not, um, to their regimen, they have to call and make sure it's okay um, because certain medicines can interact or cause more side effects um, if you don't Wow, do you are before. really doing an amazing thing. I mean, uh, thank you. Oh my gosh. I know that uh, a lot of the medications have childproof caps on them, but should all of the medications be put in some other kind of container and then maybe stored in the refrigerator instead of putting it on the shelves? It just depends. So certain liquid medications actually have to be stored in the refrigerator um, in order to um, maintain their stability, and all that information should be on the bottle. Um, if you want to put it into a different container, sometimes that's helpful um, in terms of helping you remember to take um, medicines, especially when you're on multiple medicines in a day. If you do opt to use a pill box, it's important to keep in mind that those pill boxes are very easy to open, so you definitely want to keep it um, out of the reach of any child in the home. Can we, can I ask about topical things like uh, oh like what's that pink stuff you put like when so they get rash or something? Oh, uh, calamine lotion. Yeah, calamine lotion. Are the, are things that don't get ingested but get put like on the skin or the scalp? Are they uh, should we be as careful with them as we are with the things that get swallowed? Most definitely. So even things that are topical that get put on the skin, um, you need to have that confirmation from a um, doctor or a pharmacist before you use it. Um, for infants, um, how much they absorb is actually increased um, compared to a child or an adult. And so even if you're putting a little amount, um, that amount is still absorbed in their body. So you always want to make sure that whether it's something you're buying over the counter, it, you're putting it on their body, or they're taking it by mouth, you just want to make sure that you have that confirmation that it's safe to use before you use it. And should a parent always carry like a sweater with them with the child because sometimes children get sick going in and out of the grocery store because even though the grocery store seems comfortable for the adults when you've got that child in the frozen food section or in dairy or anything it's colder than any other place in the store so do you recommend bringing a sweater or something to help uh, ward off colds? Sure. So the biggest thing to ward off colds, um, you know, so temperature control is, is um, helpful to make sure that the child's comfortable, but the biggest thing to um, ward off colds and illnesses is hand hygiene. So if you're going into a store um, and you're going to use a cart, making sure that you're sanitizing that cart before you put your child in it. If, you, if you're coughing, if other people around you are coughing, um, using hand sanitizer um, and, and just because that's the way that those viruses are spread. Yeah, and, and if you're putting your child in that little seat in the, in the um, shopping cart, oh, yes. then another child might have been in that seat who was sick, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, exactly. oh, oh my gosh. Yep, you don't trust those seats. It's going in there, their hands are in their mouth, and so yeah, um, yeah, you yeah. definitely want to make sure that everything's clean. So many things you have to remember. I, f I forgot what it was like, Robin. <laughs> so so uh, <laughs> real quick, one thing I wanted to ask you about um, the alcohol bath to reduce a fever is that still is that a good idea not a good idea not a good idea not a good idea oh not a good idea yeah no no alcohol bath to um reduce a fever if your child has a fever the best thing you can do is to call your physician and get recommendations um they'll give you recommendations on what medications you could use if any and when it's appropriate to bring your child in to be seen okay i know you have lots of interviews thank you for taking time to be on our radio station uh can you leave us with a website Sure. So um, a website that parents can check out would be safemedication.com. It has a tip sheet as well as inter illustrated instructions on how to give medications to children. All right. Excellent information. Dr. Brianne Teller, thank you so much. Be safe. And, and in the future, God bless you and your children that are yet to be born. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, doctor. We'll be right back. Bye. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source.
Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. One House panel still debating it. Another passed it early today. A plan to replace Obamacare. But even Republicans disagree over giving credits to help some people buy health insurance. Hardline conservatives like Jim Jordan believe they're another government entitlement program. Clean repeal and then replace it with a model that empowers families. House Speaker Paul Ryan says Republican lawmakers campaigned on this plan. All House Republicans participated in this. Democrats opposing it outright. Fox's Rachel Sutherland. 400 U.S. troops joining coalition forces in Syria trying to oust ISIS from Raqqa. These new troops are in addition to some 500 U.S. troops already on the ground. Raqqa is ISIS's largest stronghold. The militants are heavily trained and armed. Fox's Jessica Gulliher. More folks signed up for unemployment last week. First time jobless claims rose by 20,000, but the total number of Americans getting unemployment checks is down 6% from a year ago. Fox News. We report. You decide. Remember when a small business needed a landline? Today, landlines are a thing of the past with Grasshopper, the entrepreneur's phone system. On the road, at the beach, or at home, Grasshopper helps you grow your business. Get all the features of a business phone system and the freedom of a cell phone with our iPhone and Android apps. Features include multiple extensions for your team, calls forwarded to your mobile phones, voicemails transcribed and emailed, and so much more. See how it works at grasshopper.com, the entrepreneur's phone system. I know I need to earn my MBA if I want to move up. I'm looking for an MBA that offers unique concentrations. I want an online MBA that's top ranked, established. I care about the school's reputation because I know my future employers will too. Thinking about earning your MBA? At Northeastern's DeMore McKim School of Business, we offer a 100% online MBA with eight concentrations that can help set you apart in today's competitive workforce. To speak to an enrollment advisor, text INSPIRE to 37913. Council. Today in Florida Ag News, from a Southeast Ag Net, while Farm Bill discussions are already taking place at all levels, there are still issues that need to be discussed before a new bill can be put together. Vice President of Washington Operations for the National Cotton Council, Reese Langley, looks at the main priorities they're working on for growers right now. We're, first of all, still focused on trying to figure out a way to get a adequate safety net in place to bridge where we are now until we get to the new Farm Bill to try to provide some more stability to the cotton industry as we continue to deal with low prices, high input costs, and those challenges that growers face. We're also focusing on the importance of trade and export markets for cotton and making sure the new administration and their advisors understand that so that we can maintain access to those key export markets. And then thirdly, trying to focus on regulatory challenges to try to turn back some of those most problematic regulations that had been put in place in the last few years. Hey, Mike, what's the word today? Well, the way crop prices fluctuate,